committee that as, as the local congressman, I'm committed to advancing legislation uh, that addresses either the manufacturing of space heaters or the need for education about fire safety or the need for self-closing doors and affordable housing that receives federal funding so you have a partner at the federal level. The state will stand with the city and stand with the Bronx to make sure that no one is left behind and that we ensure that everyone who's been impacted by this tragedy gets whatever we can give to them to make their lives whole. We are walking with you on this painful journey, and we are going to make sure that we do our part and everything necessary to provide all of the support on the ground, from the social-emotional support to making sure our children are supported, trauma-informed care, resources, temporary and long-term housing. We have been on site since 1 a.m. to make sure that every client had housing last night. Over four hotels and all of the residents that remain hospitalized with serious and critical injuries. So we are asking all New Yorkers and all Bronxites to please join us in praying for these families. No one expected to wake up on a Sunday morning hearing about a fire in their building, running for their lives. This is profound sadness for all of us. But we know that in times of challenge, New Yorkers step up, because that's just what we do. And the 17 killed include eight children. The question has been raised, it's questioning now the increasing unsafing housing conditions. Officials are investigating if a maintenance issue with an apartment door may have allowed that thick smoke to fill that high-rise building. The Bronx fire was the second fire in less than a week, showing the dangerous realities of those living in multifamily units. Another deadly disaster happened at an overcrowded Philadelphia row house. That's where 12 people were killed, including eight children as well. Wow. Here with me now, we have New York landlord tenant attorney Alta Garcia, Pierre Outerbridge. She's the founder of the New York City-based law firm Outerbridge Law. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. The deadly fire we saw over the weekend was horrific, painful, right? Not only for the city of New York, but the nation. Talk about the conditions that led to that fire. What do we know so far? Absolutely. It's really, um, I mean, I, I actually woke up to it. It's awful. I haven't in my LNT landlord tenant career, haven't seen much like this. Um, what were some of the conditions? Uh, probably a lack of the heat, right? Which is leading people, tenants who use a space heater, right? That's really one of the things that caused the fire. Um, the second condition is a lack uh, apparently of self-closing doors. The fact that the doors were open allowed the fire and the smoke to go up. And how much legal recourse do these tenants have? Mm -hmm. So in terms of LNT, which is my expertise, the tenants have a lot, a lot of recourse. While most leases say that if the building is destroyed, the landlord doesn't have the right, doesn't have the duty to rebuild it. If the place is rent stabilized, tenants can put pressure on the landlord to rebuild it so that they have their housing back. Right. One of the things they can do is um, lower their rent to one dollar while preserving their tenancy. That's very, very important if they are rent stabilized or rent regulated. Right. They would have to go to an agency called DHCR. They would submit a form and the form would lower their rent to one dollar for however long the landlord takes to put the building back in order. Some landlords, not all, some some um, landlords will try to um, get the tenants out this way, um, not this way, but try not to rebuild in order to um, to get the apartments back. So tenants don't have to let that happen to them. Uh, they can lower the rent to a dollar and they would pay a dollar a month for however many years. I have tenants who paid it for years. Um, this maintains their claim to the apartment that it's their apartment whether whenever the landlord puts it back together. Another um, solution is to go to housing court and file a case called an HP action with an injunction forcing the landlord to make repairs right away. Uh, so that would be an emergency case, and the court would say on top of the landlord to make sure the repairs are proceeding, that the landlord's dealing with the insurance company promptly, whichever insurance that is, and that the landlord has a timeline to put the building back in order. Tenants should also submit claims to their insurance companies if they have renter's insurance um, or the landlord's insurance company. Um, they should also seek personal injury um, expertise to see if they have a claim for personal injury. Yeah. Um, housing court sounds like a great recourse of action, but I'm sure, as you know, I mean, it's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That's a full day. 
I mean, you're talking about losing wages. What are some other resources um, that folks can depend on? I mean, this is the second deadly, deadliest, deadly fire that we've seen in less than a week. The other one was in Philadelphia. How do we protect people? Absolutely. So folks need to call HPD. HPD is 311, which is a city agency that uh, oversees that the buildings are maintained up to code. So um, calling HPD anytime you see uh, a repair needing to be done in your apartment, of course, after advising the landlord. There's also um, housing relocation available in terms of emergencies like this, which we saw the representative talk about, the Red Cross. Uh, so there are services given to people, uh, shelters, hotels, users, shelters, uh, to make sure that they are housed uh, until this is over. Um, what else can people do? People can complain to the landlord. People can withhold rent, right? When things are not in order, they need to be withholding rent. It also appears that sprinklers were not in order in this building. Uh, so making sure that um, people are complaining enough to the city, right? So the city is aware of these conditions. Um, and that the city forces the landlord to fix these conditions. And do you suggest that they keep a running tally of every person, every contact, when they called, how long they spoke to someone, as just proof that they are reaching out and, and, and trying to get something done? Absolutely. So, yes, that can be done in terms of the HP action. The city actually logs it in when you call. When you call 311, you'll see your list of complaints online just as well. You'll see complaints and resolution of complaint. So it's actually kept by the city online in the same system, whether or not it becomes an actual violation. All right. So you can, the city is also keeping the record for you. Got it. And that's perfect. And so if you do need that, you can reach out to them for access. How can cities, right? do better in enforcing and regulating uh, heating laws. I mean, using a space heater, uh, that's a clear indication that the apartment was cold. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm not sure what to say. I mean, it's a big city and it's not, if the city's not made aware of it, then they don't really know. So folks need to call. We tell our clients to call daily. Call daily, keep calling, advocate for yourself when the inspector comes. Uh, right, keep a logs of your uh, with a thermometer yourself, right, and advocate. Folks are now uh, mostly a lot of people are working from home. It used to be that when the inspector came, people would miss the inspector, but really calling. There's no limit to how many times you can call the city agency. The city can't come if the city doesn't quite know, right? So calling, and since people are working from home, they usually are met with the, in the inspector, meet with them at home, and advocating. If you feel the inspector is not, um, hasn't really understood the problem, really advocating that that is a person just like you who is there to, uh, on your behalf, right, to, to make sure that it's, um, the work is done. Ultimately, sometimes HPD will bring a case itself. Uh, and I'm, I'm, um, I, HPD may bring a case in this scenario just as well, right, and because this is a fire that's very well reported. HPD sometimes brings its own case and sues the landlord without any help from any tenants. All right, Alta Gracia, uh, anything that I may have missed, what else can you inform our viewers out there in case they know someone or they themselves are living in similar conditions? Complain, complain, complain. Housing court is actually mostly remote now, right? So it used to take a day, no longer, right? Now it's about, you know, the, the court gives you slots on Zoom or on Teams, um, the video. So once you go into housing court and file, it takes about 15 minutes to file, then you would get a court date and you have a time slot. So there's not as much waiting as there, as there used to be. And a lot of it is online. So it's pretty easy to sue your landlord for repairs. Also, if you have a, a, a status, an immigration status, it doesn't matter for these types of cases. No one's gonna ask about it. If a landlord threatens you with reporting you for any status, immigration or criminal status, that's not something I um, that there are laws against that, at least for the immigration side. Um, as well as if you um, form tenants association so that you could um, so you could you could fight in numbers right um, also um, if you have um, um, I mean literally a tenants association is very easy to form really knocking on your next door two people make it two apartments make a tenants association right also if you owe rent it doesn't matter in these types of cases you could go to court on conditions owing rent people erroneously believe that if they owe rent that they should they you know that they don't have a right to complain you can complain an hp action you can owe however much money no one has asked the right to ask you about it in that kind of action i'm so glad that you brought that point up because uh some of the folks that were displaced were uh from gambia from yeah
Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for that information. Accommodations are being made for surviving victims who were left without a home because of that Bronx fire. One community organizer says some of the fire victims who are now sheltering at a local school are immigrants and members of the West African community. Most of the people there are, are African, West Africans, and majority of them from Gambia, West Africa, some from Guinea, but the majority of them are from Gambia. You know, uh, these are very, very strong people. These are people that will never lose hope or never lose faith, no matter how painful it is. And this is hugely painful, but it is the rev revisitation to tragedy after tragedy that we are unfortunately are coming to be familiar with. It happened so many times, it has claimed so many lives, and this is just the reputation of what we have already been through. The BNC throughout the day for continuing coverage. The latest round of talks between Russia and Washington are continuing. At stake, Ukraine's potential membership in NATO and the country's independence from Russia. After a quick break, we'll have a look at what was accomplished during day one of diplomatic talks between the two countries. Closed captioning brought to you by Nutrisystem. Lose weight with America's number one home delivery weight loss plan. Nutrisystem has answered the bell with menu items that are new for 2022, including new premium meals and restaurant favorites. Go online and get 50% off. Start losing weight today. Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my ears, got my heart, got my soul, got my mouth. I'm Behind every heartbeat is an electric power. It's a constant reminder that we're alive. So let's act like it. Go ahead, grip the wheel, and feel the thrill of everyday adventure. Push the limits, defy expectations, and show out like never before. That's why our electric vehicles have traveled over 5 billion miles. They're designed to be bold, daring, and different. Because every drive should always be electrifying. This is the new Nissan. A careless driver can change your life in an instant. Do you know what to do or who to call? If you've been injured in a motor vehicle accident and don't have an attorney, call Auto Accident Help Desk for a free consultation. We can answer all your questions and estimate the potential value of your case. When I called, they asked me a few questions and matched me with a powerful lawyer who knew how to fight for me. Call Auto Accident Help Desk and connect with an expert personal injury attorney. Don't worry how to handle your medical bills, lost wages, and pain. We'll get you the money you deserve. They got me way more than the insurance company offered. The consultation is free, and you don't pay any legal fees unless we win or settle your case. Make the smart call if you've been injured in an auto accident. Call Auto Accident Help Desk for a free legal 